Well, here you go. I'm doing a voiceover on a couple chapters for stats because Chris is so adamant about wanting them. What we're going to talk about in the first class is not only chapter 7 that you're going to read from your book on the quasi-experimental and the experimental research, but we're also going to talk about descriptive statistics. I'm going to go over the very basics. Now this PowerPoint might have a little bit more detail than we are actually going to talk about or even more so than you're responsible for. So I'm going to point that out right now as we go along. When we talk about um, descriptive statistics, we're talking about making a picture of our data. Now this is at a point where you have already collected your data and you have it in numerical format. It might be in Excel, it might be in uh, SPSS or, uh, or another software program. It might actually still be on paper and you have to then input it into one of our uh, statistical programs. So, um, and I'm going to go over that more in class about how we do that. Uh, what you need to be concerned with now really is not how to input your data, but more on once it's inputted, what you would do with it and how to read descriptive statistics from your articles and your, your, um, your studies. <clears throat> We're going to talk about central tendency, which covers uh, the basics of descriptives. It means we're going to talk about the mean, the median, and the mode, and the characteristics of your data. It's very important before you begin any statistics to run descriptive stats on your data because what it does, it just tells you what's there. When you can do an explore and it'll just tell you what you've inputted into your software program. And you can also do um, uh, tables, you can do uh, graphs that will show you what you see within uh, your data. Before I talk to you about central tendencies and uh, distribution, I wanted to show you another uh, PowerPoint. Now what I'm going to do is I've actually got three PowerPoints up right now and I'm going to be switching back and forth so that you, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is data right here. This is this is what you would start off with and if you look over here at the number what we're talking about here is the number of juvenile arrest for embezzlement. So we have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Um, and this is according to the UCR across the state. N is 50. That means that our sample is 50 states that we're looking at. Um, and of course right here I've only put 30. But So um, when we look at the number of juvenile arrests for embezzlement, we have seven states that don't have any. We have seven states that have one, four that have, four that have two, seven that have three, and so on. So this is what's called a distribution. This is what's called your raw data. And when you look at this, and I want to see more, I'm just wondering what's the average number of juvenile arrests for embezzlement? Your average is the same thing as a mean. So when you compute your mean and you do this through the, the software programs that we use, or we can do it by hand, and I'll show you in the next slide how to do that. Um, but let's see, I think it even tells you, here we go, the mean. You would add up all of your scores, and, and this is the state. Now, you would add up all of, all of the, the numbers, and you get, uh, and you divide it. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm pointing to the thing. You, you would divide it over 50, because that's the number of states, and you get a mean of 6.94. That means that... 
uh, your distribution is going to start with 6.94. That is your mean, your average number of arrest. Now, let's go back. Show you, I want to show you exactly what I mean by distribu distribution. <clears throat> Before I show you the distribution of the scores that we just looked at, I want to make sure you understand what descriptive statistics are. Uh, as I said, they're used to organize and describe the characteristics of your data. And when you do the descriptive, as I said, it's going to give you a picture of what your data looks like. So if, just to give you an idea of where the mean is, where the median, the mode, and it's just understanding what's there. Um, the example here is the most popular college major, the number of people with children in a company, and the number of oops, oh, shoot, and the number of uh, injuries at a workplace. Those are all uh, types of data that you would look at statistically, descriptives. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna. Now I have, have this slide up just so you can understand that when we talk about measures of central tendency, we're talking about descriptive data. We use these measures on descriptive data, on descriptive statistics on your data. There are a number of distributions, and I'm saying distributions, it means how is your data distributed across uh, the axis off you know you, you know what I mean by an axis you have an X and a Y axis um, when let me I'm going to show you that real quick this this is what I mean by an axis right here all we see is um, X which is our line I'm sorry I'm pointing the line here this is what we're looking at I don't want you to pay any attention to this information up here um, uh, what I want you to really look at is just this. This is what's called a bell curve. This is called. This is what we see for a distribution. It's just the bell curve. Um, now let me go back here. So what we have, we have a normal distribution, and as I said, we have a normal distribution, which is a set of scores that is equal on the left and the right. Um, according to uh, your mean. Now the positive skew means that we have a clustering of scores in the left hand side of a distribution with some relatively larger scores that pull the tail towards the positive side of the number line. Uh, let's see if I can find one real quick. Here we go. Here's our positive skew. Say so the positive skew, so you have a, we have a lot the, the higher ones here, but we have some what are called outliers here. So it's positively skewed in that there's uh, just a few of a larger number. And then the opposite of the negative skew. And what I want you to understand when I say skewed and the number, these are just all right here. These are all your data points. So whatever you've had with your data, this is what we have in our distribution. These are just uh, scores, scores on an axis. That's what we're looking at. And as I explained a second ago, this is a normal distribution right here. These are, you don't see the actual points because it was distributed by descriptive statistics. Just to give us, it just shows us, gives us an idea of what our data looks like. So and the normal distribution, this is what you really want, but it's very uncommon that you're going to, to actually get this normal. Okay, let's move. Now, when we talk about the mean, as I just stated, it's the averages. Um, in criminal justice, we are often interested in the mean. The mean is very important, and everything is going to build off the mean when we talk about and get into more statistics, um, the measures of central tendency that I was that we're going to talk about are the mean, the median, and the mode. The mean, as I said, is the dis is the average um, of all of your scores, and 
you get the mean simply as you do as an average, add up all your scores and divide by the total. That gives you your mean. Uh, your mode is that which is seen more. So, for instance, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, on here, we would look and see, now by looking at this, it looks to me like the number of states that we see the most is number one. So, one would be our mode. That's how, and then this is just looking at it. When we do statistics within our software programs, all of this is computed for you. You just type in mode and it pops out and it tells you what your mode is. It tells you what your median is. It tells you what your, um, uh, uh, what your, um, uh, your median is. The median is the actual, the score that cuts a distribution exactly in half. So it's not the same as your mean. It could just be that, let's say we had scores from 1 through 100. 50 would be the median. So everything that is above the 50 is in the percent, is in, is called in the upper 50th percentile, and the lower is the lower 50th percentile. Now we can do the same thing across 25%. We can divide it up and look at the four uh, quartiles is what they're called when we have uh, when we look at it and divide it up by 25 percent. Now I want you to take a minute. Now I'm going to give you time and I think you can you can pause uh, the PowerPoint but what I want you to do is to calculate on this data you see in front of you what is the mean and the median? And what we're looking at is the number of assaults. How many, what is the mean and the median number of assaults in these areas? So we're going to, and N is 5, that means our population is 5. We're only looking at 5 areas right now. And when we look at the assaults, I want you to go ahead and calculate the mean and the median. At the bottom here where it says calculate the deviation score and the sum of the scores, uh, don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. You don't know what I mean by that anyway. But go ahead and uh, calculate the mean and the median. If I asked you to calculate the mode, what would you say? There's not, there's not one. There's not one more used than the other. If you had two 35s, then your mode would be 35. Right here is where it tells us our median is 17. That, was, that means that there are two numbers, 35 and 72, above 17. There's 3 and 0 below 17. So 17 is our median number. To do the mean, you add them all up, divide by 5, and your median is 25.40. Now, this is really important to know, to know the mean. This is what we're going to figure out. This is where we're going to see where all our scores and how they're distributed. This, this is a little bit important. Don't, I don't want you to worry about this part right here. Now, I've gone back to an, another PowerPoint and I'm just going to give... Uh, you another definition <clears throat> of the distribution of your scores. I want you to make sure you understand what I mean by a normal distribution or a distribution of scores. It measures a central tendency. This is really the basis for statistics. <clears throat> uh, in class on Monday, we're going to go over some uh, Article studies that I put on Blackboard. I want you to look over those method sections and I want you to also look and see if you see any results that say descriptive statistics. Uh, we're going to don't have to do anything with them. We're going to go over all of this on on Monday. I will bring copies of the articles so everybody can have <clears throat> their own their own view. But Anyway, okay, uh, here the definition of a normal distribution is a the theoretical distribution with data 
that are symmetrically distributed around the mean, the median, and the mode. <clears throat> the scores that are closer to the mean, it means that they are more probable or likely than scores farther from the mean. You're going to have a more um, predominant scores around the mean. Uh, most of the time when we're talking about our behavioral sciences, uh, researchers do often tend to approximate a normal distribution. In order to compute some statistics, you need a normal distribution. And what we do as statistics, as statisticians now, and criminal justice researchers, is a lot of times we will take out those outliers that knock off our distri distribution. For instance, when I did a study, I did it on sentencing, sentencing uh, length, and when I compared it with the federal, state, federal and state, some of them <clears throat> in the federal prison had a sentencing of 599 or 99, and it really threw off uh, my statistics because they would put in uh, like 999, meaning that they had a life term. So they didn't, they would never get out. And that's the way it was coded. So I took out that 999 and it was amazing to see it uh, change the whole distribution to more normal. As I, as I showed you a second ago, the normal distribution and the SKUs, here they are together. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, scratch that. These are all normal distributions. These are three examples. Now they have different means and different standard deviations. And I'm going to explain to you here very shortly what a standard deviation is. Because when you read your studies, you're going to see standard deviations and you're going to see SD. And you, you have to understand what they're talking about. But as you see, these are the examples. Here we've got um, <clears throat> just a different mean. This mean here is higher. This one here is, is a little lower, or I'm sorry, this one's a little lower than this one is lower. And they all have, if you look, the, the one that has the high mean has got uh, a, some that are uh, uh, outliers on both ends as opposed <clears throat> to the normal distribution. Now, some characteristics of a normal distribution. I know you're getting very scared now because you are seeing this mathematical problem. Don't worry, you're going to have to do this in class on Monday. I'll give you some scores um, because you're, you're graded on, on your mathematical ability in statistics. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. You don't even have to know this. You don't have to pay any attention to this. I just want you to read to understand how it is mathematically defined. The shape of a normal distribution is specified by an equal relation relating each score along the x-axis with each frequency along the y-axis. Um, <clears throat> and rarely, as I was saying, does the behavioral data fall exactly within the limits of a normal distribution. Now, the characteristics of what we're talking about in a normal distribution is, well, uh, we have the mean, the median, the mode, as I've already explained. So half of the data in a normal distribution falls above the mean, the median, and mode, and half fall below. Oh, sorry. Gosh, I took it back. <clears throat> a normal distribution is symmetrical. Symmetrical. That the distribution of data above the mean is exactly the same as below the mean. In other words, you can fold it right in half and they should all match. The mean can actually equal any, any value, as you can see. It just depends on uh, your scores. Uh, the standard deviation um, always equals a positive value, and I'll explain this to you in just a minute. Don't, don't worry, we're going to go all over all this again on Monday as you need. Here are some easier ways to understand what central tendency means. The central tendency measures that tend to be toward the center of a distribution. Remember how I said that it's favorable when the scores surround the mean. 
And when we look at the types of central tendency, we're looking again at the mean, the median, and the mode. Now, in case you're wondering, I am repeating myself. I'm repeating it a, a lot because I want to make sure I go over these areas in depth. <clears throat> um, the differences in notation that what you'll see, normally we use the capital N for the population and the sample size is denoted by the smaller n. When we talk about what a population is in a sample, um, what we are referring to is, for instance, if we're looking at juvenile offenders, and, and everyone is, when you look at the juvenile offenders, that's your population. So your population size is the juvenile offenders, or it can be uh, offenders, juveniles in school, and we can find out what that population size is by the number of juveniles in the schools that, that are being used. And it doesn't make any sense to, it takes a lot of time uh, to pick um, that entire population and to take every, uh, if you wanted to find out how many, how many children in a school system had ever uh, uh, smoked marijuana. We would have, are we going to ask every child? We would, that means we would have to get, we would have to have the probability that every one of those can be within our, our sample. So when we have that, it just doesn't make any sense. If you're looking at, a, at a, um, a number of schools in, you know, Tennessee, for instance, you're looking at thousands of schools and then, so you're going to have to get a reply from all of them. So it's just not probable. So what we do is we pick a sample from that population, and we'll talk about this more later about how we do that, but there's all different ways to pick a sample. Uh, it could be randomly, it could be stratified, but we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about that, I think, next week. <clears throat> Just want you to know that your population is the total, and the sample size is what you take. This is why we do statistics, because it's, it's so unprobable to be able to uh, research the entire population. Again, the mean, this is in just summary, I'm going over this again with a different type of, um, of slides. It's the mean is the sum of a set of scores in a distribution divided by the total number of scores sum. What we have down here, these are the, the symbols for the mean. The mean is designated, the population mean is designated um, by the little, I can't remember what that's called, but, um, and then the sample mean is designated by the capital M. Um, this little funny looking E right here is the, sum, is the um, symbol for sum, and the X is the number of scores, the scores. So you would add up all the scores and divide by uh, your, your population sample. I'm, I'm sorry, your population total and your sample total, and you would get your mean. Now, given the following data, I want you to compute this mean and see how it's, how it's done. That suppose a sample of participants must walk past a scary portion of campus after dark. To measure the fear, we record how quickly they walk through the scary portion of campus. Now, if you are doing this, what kind of research is this? What kind? Are we looking at uh, survey research? Are we looking at field research? Field research. So <clears throat> the following times are recorded, 8, 9, 5, 5, and 8 to compute the mean. So to compute the mean, what do we do? We add them all up. We get 56. This is the sum of all the scores of, of each score added up is 56. You then divide the number of scores um, the number of scores sum by the number you have. Our total was 56. We have eight scores, so our mean is 7.0. That just means on average it takes um, everybody seven seconds to walk past that scary portion on campus. Not going to cover this. <clears throat> now to the to the median. The median, as I've stated, is the middle value in a distribution of data listed in numerical order. And the best way to find the median is to list out your entire distribution of scores. And as I showed you earlier, when we had those ones um, from the UCR where you had zero, 
uh, up to, I don't remember the, the value, but you would write out the entire uh, scores and then find the median. There should be the same amount from each side. This represents the midpoint of the scores. This tells us a lot and a lot of times you'll see that uh, researchers use the median more so than the mean. So the ca to calculate the median position, and this means you're, you're just finding out where, how do I get to that score without counting each one, you do uh, <clears throat> the number of your sample plus one divided by two. So, and it, it is, it's, it differs a little bit between odd and even sets, and you may have to just look at it a little bit better, but usually what you're going to find is the same score in the median, in the middle right there. So you do your sample plus one divided by two, and that's the position with where your score is. So you would count in that many to your score. Uh, quickly, that when the median, uh, when, when your sample is an odd number, you find the median, uh, look, look, look at the way we do it for these scores. You have uh, five scores. So your median position is, oh, there it is for me right there, pay attention, Lydia. Uh, five plus one uh, divided by two, which is like we said, the number of scores is five, add one, divide by two, and you get three. So you count in three, one, two, three, and there's your median. Of 44. Now, if you notice, the scores are in numerical order. When uh, the sample is even, is even, you find the median for the scores. Here we are. We have four. We have uh, we add four plus one divided by two, and we get 2.5. So the median is actually a little bit different because it's going to be in between two numbers. So you take the two median scores, which is 66 and 44 add them up and divide and you get 55. So that's our median position. I hope this makes sense. If not, please write this down and we'll go over it in class again. Now an example of the mode. The mode is the value in a data set that occurs most often or more, most frequently. So to find the mode, you have to list the set of scores in numerical order. And then you just have to count the score that occurs most often. So when you're doing this by hand, this is what you have to do. But as I've said, luckily, in a software program, it will do this for us. So when you look here, you just count, you have to look and count them up. Which one do you see more? Uh, more? Which score is there the most? And the, it's four. Four is, occurs more often than any other. Now, now that you know how, how to calculate the mean, you know what the mean is of your scores, now I want to just explain a little bit about why do we even use the mean? Why do we need it? Um, it's used because the mean includes all the scores in a calculation. So all the scores that you have collected from your data, it includes all of them. So the mean is important in that way. When we talk about finding a mean. Remember, there's four different types of data. They are categorized a certain way. Remember, we have nominal and categorical, um, I mean, ordinal, nominal and ordinal, ordinal, which are categorical variables, meaning they don't have, they don't have a number um, subscribed to them, but interval and ratio data have a number. So there's a difference when you look at a number of, uh, um, as I said, sentences prison sentences, and if we look at um, a facility and we want to, um, on juveniles, determine, we want to do some uh, some comparing between institutions, and uh, what is the length of sentence between, uh, let's do this, let's think of it, how about we do, uh, we compare how long a juvenile is incarcerated as compared to how long are they in a community program? And we're going to check the recidivism rates on this. But this is one of the things that we're going to compare. So we have to have interval and ratio data. And now what we would have ratio data. Ratio because it has a true zero. Now, you're not going to find anybody in these two that have a zero sentencing. But it is a possible sentence. 
I'm sorry, I do that quite frequently. So what we would be looking at when we look at our mean, we would add up the total number of sentencing. Now, remember again, what we want is a sample from that population. So if we're looking at two different uh, uh, facility or two different uh, in incarceration in those in the community, let's say in, in the community of, of Knoxville, we know we have found out that there's a um, hundred juveniles that are in community corrections. They're in the community and community programs. We find that uh, there are uh, 200 incarcerated. Well, we want the same number within our sample from each of our two provide uh, our two placements. So we're going if we can take a hundred from that would be great. But uh, let's say we're going to take fifty from those in the uh, the community. That's our our sample that we um, identify in a random manner, um, and we compare that to fifty within that are incarcerated. So we take that those 50 sentences, we add them up, divide by the 50, and that tells us our mean for both of those placements. We use the median um, is reported for, um, helps us with skewed distributions of data. That's why the median is used uh, so often. It's not influenced by the value of the outliers. So the median really tells us, you know, exactly what it says, the median score. <clears throat> uh, the ordinal scale data. And another way that we use the median is with data that is ordinal. In other words, you know, it's placed in an order, let's say that we're looking at uh, uh, um, college students and we want to evaluate uh, how many college students have smoked, have smoked marijuana. So uh, we would look at there's no difference between a uh, well let's I'm sorry let me change that. We're going to look at in, in one college we want to compare how, what's the number in each class. So we want to know how many are freshmen, how many are sophomore, junior, senior, etc. No, et uh, so what we would do is we would have our sample of 50, and out of that 50, we can see that there's 10, 10 that are freshmen, 12 that are sophomores. Uh, I'm not adding it up correctly. But what we do is then we write out all the number that we have of those, and we can count to, to get our median to, in the middle. So we know that the median is going to run around sophomores, just guessing. It's just more of an indicator when we have ordinal data. Well, that was a lot of information. So what I think I want to do is I'm going to stop this recording, I'll give you a chance to go back and review this as needed, and I'm going to go over uh, variability of scores in the next PowerPoint.